Hello everyone and welcome to the Secret Stage Gaming News for March 23, 2016. I am your host, Jared. And you might be wondering why I haven't had done the news in a couple of days. Well, it's because I've been preparing for a trip to Boston. If you were listening to our Pokin Tournament livestream, you will know that I'm going out for Anime Boston and then spending a couple more days in my beloved hometown. So sadly, my internet connection might not be as stable as I'd like it to be, and thus news might not really get done for a while. Don't worry, I will be back on Wednesday and I'll do a makeup episode of news on Thursday. But for now, please enjoy the current news and stay tuned for all sorts of really cool updates from the Secret Stage team while I'm away. We are beginning with some Sonic news because we don't get to do that too often. First off, for those of you who are fans of Sonic Boom and are looking forward to a brand new Sonic Boom game, Sonic Boom Fire and Ice now has a release date, September 27th and it'll be on the 3DS. I assume it'll be very similar to the previous Sonic Boom game, allowing you to switch up the different characters, explore these different areas, and be much more about exploration and character usage rather than rushing through a stage to get to the end. Which is fine, but for me, my Sonic is always going to be rushing through a stage to get to the end. However, Sega has also announced that there will be a 25th anniversary Sonic event. It'll be at the House of Blues in San Diego on July 22nd. Tickets run for $25 and can be purchased via the event site. I have the link in the show description. We also have a handful of rumors to go through, so let's get started with that. First off, if you are one of the many people that heard that Nintendo was going to cease production of the Wii U this year, Nintendo has responded and those rumors are false. Nintendo has no plans of ceasing production of the Wii U, especially considering how many units they've sold since the release of Pokin, so we'll see the Wii U around for a while. So don't think you have to rush out to the store to buy it before they all run out. The second rumor is that Japanese developer Treasure, known for hits like Gunstar Heroes and Ikaruga, is going to shut down. They haven't had a big hit in a while, and they have been licensing out their IPs, so there is a lot of speculation saying that Treasure will cease to be before the end of the year. And that's a bummer, because I'm a huge fan of the Gunstar Heroes franchise. I have included a link to the episode where Ramses and I play through Gunstar Heroes. The audio is a little weird on it, but it's still a really cool playthrough, and I think you can get the gist of our conversation, even if it's a little one-sided. Of course, it wouldn't be the game news if we didn't have a story about upcoming movies and anime series. It has been revealed that they are already in plans for making a sequel to the Michael Fassbender Assassin Creed movie. I guess they're really expecting this movie to be awesome because planning a sequel when the first movie hasn't even come out yet is always a sign of overconfidence, in my opinion. The movie will be coming out in December, and as I said before, it features Michael Fassbender as a new assassin with a story that should tie into the main plotline of the games. In addition to that, it was announced that Splinter Cell, starring Tom Hardy, will also be coming out in 2017, likely early 2017. That's never a good sign. If you're a January or February movie, that's the dumping ground for crap. But let's hope that Tom Hardy has made a good choice with the Splinter Cell movie. Last but not least, the creators of Steins Gate will have an anime based on their next project. It is called Occult 9, and while there's very little information about the game, the information we know about the anime is that it's about nine strangers being drawn together via the occult and a very weird website. Sounds like something fans of the original Steinsgate could really get behind. It'll be interesting to see how this anime turns out, and even more interesting to see how the game turns out. But bows probably won't be coming out until next year. We're reaching the home stretch. This is my miscellaneous news pile. First off, it has been confirmed that Gearbox Software's next game, Battleborn, will require an online connection at all times, whether you're playing single player or multiplayer. While I feel that this isn't really an issue in this day and age, it does seem like something that some people will have to bear in mind if they intend to be playing Battleborn. Bandai Namco has released a survey, and while that's generally not something particularly newsworthy, this survey does have a question regarding whether or not you want to see Tekken 7 as a PC release. If you're interested, check out the link in our show description. Razer Fight Sticks had a major breakdown during a Street Fighter V tournament, in the final round 19 tournament in Georgia, several 
Razer arcade sticks broke down. According to the CEO, those Street Fighter V arcade sticks were prototypes and the problem will be fixed by the time they're released. Razer having issues? No shock there. Punch Club developer Lazy Bear Games has used game analytics software to determine how many of the games were pirated and how many of the games were legitimately purchased. They have sold 300,000 units. However, 1.6 million units have been pirated when you combined the PC, Mac, Linux, and mobile versions of the game. They are currently trying to find new ways to entice players to jump in, and they hope that those who did pirate the game will buy a legitimate copy because this is, of course, how they keep their company afloat. It is kind of shocking to hear the difference between the purchases and the pirates. I never thought the gap was that large. I always thought it was about 50-50, personally. Finally, EA's lawsuit over their depictions of players in the Madden games has gotten another update. This court case began because of their mode that allowed people to use players and teams from the early days of football featured the likeness of many players without their permission. This led to a lawsuit, and EA tried to defend themselves saying that this is a freedom of speech issue. However, the Supreme Court has denied that, and they are back to their original case trying to defend themselves against the fact that they use people's likenesses without their permission. This is not the first case that EA has had in this category. They also had this problem with NCAA football when they were sued over the using the likeness of various students without their permission. That case ended in a payoff, and odds are so will this one. And that's the news. I hope you enjoyed it because it might be the last one for at least a week. If you're in the New England area, please stop by Anime Boston. You can meet me at my two panels. 3 o'clock on Friday, I will be hosting the Carl Masick panel, and at 1.30 on Saturday, I will be hosting the Lupin the Third panel. For any information as to where to find us on the internet, you can always check out our show notes. We have our links to our streaming services and our Twitter right there. In addition to that, please like, share, and subscribe to our channel, because it's the only way we know that people are listening. Thank you once again. I'll talk to you guys soon, but until that time, my name is Jared, and that's the way the news goes.